Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another tank printer, this one from HP. This is the Smart Tank 5101, and it uses bottles of ink versus ink cartridges, and the cost of ownership of one of these is much less than a printer that uses cartridges. This one comes with four ink bottles, as you can see here, and it's good for about seven to 8,000 pages, depending on what you are printing, and the replacement cost on the bottles is not all that expensive given how much volume you can get out of a bottle of ink here. And we're gonna take a closer look at this printer and what it's all about in just a second, but I do wanna let you know this came in from HP free of charge. Typically they loan these to the channel, but these are difficult to ship back when you've got a full tank of ink here. So we'll be donating this printer to a local school when I am done reviewing it here. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this printer is all about. Now the price point on the printer comes in at $199 at the time I'm shooting this video. You can replace all of the ink for $66 total between the four colors here. The color bottles are $16 each and the black bottle is about $18. Now the printer comes with a full supply of ink in the box. This should be good for maybe a year or two, depending on the volume of printing that you're doing, but those estimates are based upon a minimal amount of coverage on the page. So for example, this is a lot different perhaps than a photo might be insofar as how much ink is used. So if you're printing a lot more photos or doing color business documents like something like this, that is certainly going to eat up a lot more ink than just some text on the page. So your mileage will vary, but the cost here of replacement ink is not all that prohibitive. Now the setup process was not all that difficult. I do recommend using your smartphone with HP's app. It makes everything a lot easier, especially for getting the printer on your Wi-Fi. Once the printer is connected to the network, all of your computers and phones will be able to find it automatically, and it's very easy to print to. When you install the ink, you do need to be careful to make sure you get the right bottle with the right color. I found though that it wasn't very difficult or messy to get the ink loaded up. You just put the bottle down on top of the right color, push down on it, and it will drain into the tank. And it also doesn't overflow either. You will have a little bit of ink left on the black bottle here, as you can see. So over time, you'll use this one again, but the colors will fill up the tank completely when you put them in for the first time. And of course, you can monitor ink levels just by looking at the window on each. Now one mystery of this printer involves its replaceable print heads that you install when you first get the printer set up. They look a lot like ink cartridges and these are actually what put the ink onto the paper and HP does not have any information about how long those print heads last for nor what they cost to replace. At the moment they just direct you to call support if you need a new one. I suspect given my experiences with other tank printers from other brands that the print heads should last a good long time, but at some point you might have to replace them and I would imagine the cost of replacement will be similar to what an ink cartridge typically costs and this has two of them on board. Now this is an all-in-one device, meaning it has a scanner on the top so you can make copies and scan items into your phone or computer. I'll show you that in action in a few minutes. But you'll notice it doesn't have a document feeder, it is just a flatbed and all it's got room for up here is about an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So your scanning options are pretty limited. It does scan though at a 1200 by 1200 DPI. So you can do photos and that sort of thing and get pretty good results out of it. The printer is pretty limited in its paper capacity. It only holds about hundred pages of 20 pound stock here at the top. You can use legal size paper, but that's the largest it'll take. It also doesn't support duplexing meaning you have to manually print on both sides of the paper if you want to do that. The print speed is 12 pages per minute in black and white and five pages per minute in color. That's in its draft format. If you want a better quality image, it'll take a little bit longer to print something out. And we'll take a look at print speed in a second. It doesn't send faxes directly, but their mobile app has a mobile fax option that will allow you to scan something on the scanner here and have HP fax it out for you. At the moment, the fax service is free, but at some point they're going to start charging for it and it does not receive faxes, it only sends them out. So let's take a look at its print performance now. We're going to print out this black and white text document real quick. And I'll just go over here to print. 
Again, I found it to be very easy to find the printer on the network. My Mac and Windows machines both picked it up and installed drivers very quickly. And here I've got a five page document of just black and white text. And what I'm gonna do is just print this out in its basic quality setting here, the normal setting. And I'll go ahead and click print. And this is the setting that will deliver us about 12 pages per minute. I also printed out the better quality version a little bit earlier. And that one did take a little bit longer to print, but it wasn't substantially slower. But you can see here, this is about the speed you can expect out of this. So this is really designed for use in the home where you're printing out the kids' homework, maybe a recipe every once in a while, but certainly not something where you're doing a high volume all the time. But the good news is, is that if you are printing even small amounts on a regular basis, the cost per page is significantly less than other printers. So here is the output in its normal setting. The text actually doesn't look too bad for the faster output option. And then you can see here what it looks like in the best setting, which is actually very close to laser when we're looking at text here. So all in, not a bad print output for the price point. So now let's take a look and see how quickly it can output a color document. This is a little newsletter template that's built into Apple Pages. And if I go over here to print, again, I'm just going to do the uh, normal quality setting here, and we'll see how quickly this prints out. And I'll show you an example of what it looks like in the higher quality mode also. Again, there is a speed difference here when you're printing color. You go from 12 pages a minute to five in this normal setting, and I found it was a little bit slower, about two and a half to three pages per minute when you have the higher quality setting enabled. But still, if you've got you know, a five or 10 page document to print out, you can click print, grab a cup of coffee and it will be done by the time you get back. But you can see here that the uh, print speed is a bit slower than it is on the uh, black and white option. Now I did notice a pretty big difference in quality between the normal and best settings when it comes to a color document like this one. This is what the normal one looks like. It doesn't look bad, but if you take a look at what the best mode one looks like, it is significantly better. And because you've got all this ink in the tank on this one, you can afford to go with the higher quality to get the better output quality, especially if it's something you're presenting to a customer or a teacher or a professor or whoever you might be presenting something to. So all in, the print quality isn't bad for a lower end printer. It does do photos as well. In fact, it will do borderless photos up to eight and a half by 11. Now a little bit earlier, I did print out two borderless photos on four by six photo paper. This one of my dog looks okay, but the colors are kind of muted. You can see the phone original here looks a lot better, but an outdoor shot that was better lit did fare better, although this is not designed to be a photo printer. So although you'll get somewhat of a passable photo if you're hanging it up on the fridge or something like that, if you are looking for the best photo output quality, you'll definitely want to get a photo printer that can use more than four colors. And there are a number of photo printers on the market that are also tank printers, which are a lot less expensive to operate than a cartridge-based one. So let's talk about scanning now. One of the nice things about how this works is that once you get it on your network, not only does it appear as a printer, it also appears as a scanner for applications that support scanning. So for example, on the Mac, there's one built right into Mac OS called Image Capture. And as you can see here, our smart tank is available to us there. Additionally, on the Windows side, there's an application called Windows Fax and Scan that's also built right into the operating system. You've got it and you didn't even know you had it. And when you go to scan, it will find the scanner on the network provided you installed the printer already and you will be able to scan right into Windows in the same way. Additionally, they have an app from HP called HP Smart. This runs on iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. And one issue I found with the app is that it only lets you scan up to about 300 DPI yet the scanner here can go up to 1200 DPI. So I think if you plan on scanning photos or something and you want the highest resolution, use one of the computer apps that can select the maximum resolution that the scanner supports. So I'm gonna scan this document that I just printed out a minute ago. So I'm gonna place it in the scanner here and close the lid. And we're gonna go over to my Mac first. And I'm gonna just run this one at 600 DPI. I'm gonna save it as a TIFF so we don't lose any quality here, no compression and I'm going to click on Overview. And what this will do first is give me an overview to make sure I've got everything aligned for our final scan. This one goes a lot quicker than the real one goes. 
So now that I'm confident that I've got the area that I want selected, I can also adjust this selection window if I want. I'm going to click on scan and the scanner will now scan this document at 600 dpi. Now the higher the resolution you go, the slower the scanner is going to be. And this being kind of a lower end device, I would not expect lightning fast scans out of this. So this is not something you're going to want to use for archiving. Uh, but if you do need to scan a document every once in a while and you are okay doing them one at a time, it should be adequate for the task. Now it did take it over a minute to do that scan, but note that the progress bar at the bottom you saw before was not accurate as to its actual progress. So it did run a little quicker than it looked, but it still takes a while. But the output here, I think looks pretty good. And it was doing this all over the network. Now additionally, you can use your mobile phone to scan documents. So if I click on scan here, and I go over to the preview button, it will do pretty much the same thing we saw earlier, but instead deliver the document to my phone. So it's going to do a preview here so I can make sure I'm getting what I'm looking for, and then I can go ahead and actually scan the document. Now when you use your phone to do this, it'll save the document into the HP app, but you can also share it out so you could text it to somebody, you could add it as an email attachment. It'll pretty much work like just about any document would on your smartphone coming from other apps. Although just note, you're not going to be able to use the maximum resolution of the scanner. Now, in addition to sending images from the scanner to the phone, you can also print things from the phone to the printer. And so right now I've got the photo print feature up right now with a picture of my dog I took earlier. And right now, because I have eight and a half by 11 paper installed on the printer, it's going to print me a borderless eight and a half by 11 photo. And one thing I wanna point you towards here though is the quality setting because by default, it often sets it to normal. So make sure you've got best selected to get the best quality out of it. Now you can also print directly from mobile applications. So for example, on the left here, I've got my iPhone running with pages, which is a word processor. And if I go over here to print and I select my printer, you can see the smart tank is available to print for me. So I can click print here and out it will come in a second once everything gets going. And then on the Android side, I found printing is getting a lot better here as well. I should note in full disclosure that this is a Pixel 8 Pro that came in free of charge from Google recently for a review, which I'll get to at some point in the future. And if I go over here to uh, this uh, printout I'm setting up of a website, as you can see, my HP Smart Tank shows up here on the list as an available printer. And if I click on the print button here, I will hit OK, and that will also make its way out here as well. So a lot of seamless printing here, even when you're using apps other than HP's smart app. Now you can also make copies of documents, including color documents, without having to use a phone at all. So I'm gonna put this document here on the flatbed, and if I push the green button here, I will get a single color copy. If I push the button again, I can increment the number of copies it can make up to 99. This button will do black and white copies, and this button is designed for credit cards and other ID cards that you may have to scan from time to time. This is what one of the copies looks like after it comes out. It actually does a pretty decent job of making color copies without the need for an app at all. Now, if you have kids, one neat feature of the HP app is their printables section. And this lets you print out stuff to keep your kids occupied or maybe even you occupied. So for example, they got a whole bunch of holiday stuff here. And for example, I can go to the Christmas photo booth props thing here. And if we click on preview and uh, browse through this, you can see they've got a whole bunch of cutouts that you can print out on your printer, which I'll do right now. And then you and the kids can have some fun getting those ready for your photos that you'll be taking during the holidays. Additionally, they've got coloring book pages, crossword puzzles, all sorts of cool stuff. And there's even ways to have some of your voice assistants send this stuff to the printer automatically. So lots of fun stuff to find in there that might add a little more value to the printer. So if you're a home user that does a lot of printing, I think you're gonna find a lot of value here with this printer, even more so than the printers that use HP's Instant Ink subscription. One thing to note though, is that the print mechanism on this is pretty low end. It's not all that fast. It's not that great for photos, but for documents, I found it to do a very nice job, especially when you set it to the best setting. How long can you go on a bottle of ink with this? Well, I think for most users, it's gonna be at least a year or more depending on the volume that you're doing. But like other inkjet printers, these will get clogged up if you don't print all that frequently. So for very infrequent printers, I still recommend a laser printer. But if you are a home user that is printing out quite a bit 
uh, during the week. This is certainly going to save you a lot of money, and it's not all that expensive on the entry point. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.